Okay. You know, yesterday, uh, Pastor Dana, uh, Word of Life in Delaware, preacher, uh, he, she and Pastor Chris were sharing out of uh, the story of Jacobet. Okay, who's Jacobet? Jacobet is not a is not a figure in Star Wars. Okay, Jacobet is the mother of Moses. Okay, she's the mother of Moses. All right, Jacobet in Exodus one and two, and it struck me how the 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 theme throughout the Bible is is the same. Right from Moses to anybody else, right? Everyone will be tested. Everyone will be will come to a place where where they have to uh, face sometimes trials, some, not just trials, but sometimes crises. You know, and in those crises, they have to they have to step up in their faith. They have to step up in trusting God, even in the midst of uh, even in the midst of fear, even in the midst of doubts and things like that. You know, and, and we just finished Mother's Day, right? And yesterday, uh, as Pastor Dana and Pastor Chris were sharing, you know, something in my heart really uh, uh, was touched. You know, I didn't realize that, you know, I was carrying a lot of anxieties as well and a lot of fear. You know, as, and sometimes being a parent, you know, being a parent, you know, especially in this time, okay, you know, we, we, we worry about our children's future. You know, we see their education, their studies, we wonder where, where, where would they be in, the, in many years down the road, right? My son Jeremy, he's like one or two years away from college, right? You know, okay? And sometimes they scare us, you know, they scare us because they don't want to go to university. They scare us because they want, they want to be a bus driver. <laughs> you know? They scare us because they, they, want to, they don't want to study, right? That kind of thing. And especially now, you know, uh, all our kids are at home. They're not in school. In normal days, all our children will be studying, right? We don't, out of sight, out of mind, man. But now our kids are all within sight, and our minds are going nuts and going crazy. You know how are we going to graduate? They are, they are nearly six months out of school, you know? You know, by now, usually June, you be, uh, if you are in primary six in Malaysia, you are preparing for UPSR, you know, in the past. Okay, and after that, you're preparing for Form 3 exams and SPM or O-levels in October, November, that kind of thing. You know, so a lot of worries, right? A lot of worries. You know, and, and sometimes I scold my kids, you know, why are you not studying? Why are you not studying? And then, you know, and, and my worry is not because they are not studying. My worry is because you don't study now. Huh? You don't study now after you become a garbage man in the future, how? Huh? You know, you don't study now, uh, you cannot get into university, and then you cannot get, find a, a good wife, and your wife won't, won't, res won't respect you because you don't have a good salary and things like that. You know, and, and sometimes, where did all these things come from? You know, hey, how, how is my mind running ahead of me? You know, I remember Pastor Dwayne always tell, uh, told, us, told the kids when he prays for them, these are children, you are nine years old, just be nine years old. <laughs> you are five years old, just be five years old, yeah. you know. And but for us as parents, when we look at them at five years old, we are thinking they are already twenty-five years old. When we look at our kids at sixteen, we think they are already fifty, you know, forty, right? That kind of thing. You know, I don't know about you, but it's not just that. Sometimes we get a hit in our fears, our thoughts, our anxiety, you know. And especially now for for our church, it's like when can we start? Mm. When can we resume? Mm. Mm. You know that kind of thing, right? And, and I, I know pastors, you know, you are, uh, you are in running your church. Also, the, the factor of finances and all these things will, will cause you to be anxious because you have salaries to pay, you know, you have bills to pay, you have uh, installments, bank loans to service as well, right? You know, and sometimes being men, we fall into this trap of fear, you know, of anxiousness. Sometimes we think that we, have, we are able to maintain it, able to contain it, you know, but, but, but actually we don't, we don't really deal with, with anxieties very, very well, mm, mm. you know. How do you deal, you know, when you have reached the last strand of hair that you can pull on your head? You know, how, can, how do you deal when you reach the last ounce of sweat that you can sweat, right? You know, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, you know, when he was, uh, uh, sort of uh, struggling with, carry, with taking on the, 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 the call of his life to die on the cross. He asked the Father, if this, is, if this cup can pass from me, 
You know, he was so bad, he struggled at, in the garden of Gethsemane that his sweat became almost like blood. Right? Almost like blood. You know, so if you ever think that Jesus don't understand what you are going through, he went through and not being a guilty party at all, you know. He's not guilty of any sin or anything at all. He went through because of us. You know, have you ever been in a place where, where you have to suffer and struggle because of somebody else's issues have become yours? Right? Jesus knows it. He knows it. Mm. Right? So you see like in the story of uh, Abraham, you know, firstly, he got his, his promise from God, Isaac, the baby, uh, the, Isaac. And after that, God told him, you know, take your son up to Mount Moriah to, be a, to make as a sacrifice. You know, Abraham could have thought, you know, uh, uh, that God was crazy. Or if you are, uh, if you are Jacobet, Moses' mom, you know, you've got a precious baby, you know, right, your precious baby. But then all around you, your baby's life, even at first born, is a threat. Mm -hmm. You know, and yet she had to find a way to, to help her baby survive. And the only way that, that she could think of having this baby survive was to let this baby be inside a, a ark. You know, and the ark was, had the character of the ark in Noah. You know, they had a picture that foretell that the, that Jesus as our up to, you know, and the baby, you know, she had to release her son, the baby, in in that boat and into the river. You know, if the, if nature doesn't take you, Pharaoh and his army will be after every baby of of the Israelites, right? You know, but thank God, you know, just like Abraham, just like Jacob. And just like our Lord said, Jesus. At the last moment of their, their, their fear and their anxiety, you know, as they trusted God, you know, as they released their trust in spite of their anxieties and fear, you know, they began to find breakthrough. Jacobet, you know, the baby somehow flowed down river stream, you know, and, and was found by... The, the, the daughter of Pharaoh, you know, and the daughter of Pharaoh told Jacob, you take care of her, him, you know, and I will pay you to take care of him. Mm. Wow! It's, it's, it's in obeying God, in trusting God, Jacob got back her son, mm. and much more than ever, you know, and Abraham as well, when he surrendered Isaac, you know, God said to him, surrender now your son, your only begotten son, you know, but Abraham at that point, on, at Mount Moriah, he, he did not have only one son. Remember, he already had two sons. One was Ishmael. Okay? Even though he came not out of promise, but yet, you know, Abraham was a father of two boys, just like I'm a father of my two sons. But God said, so give now, you know, sacrifice now your son, your only begotten son. You know? What was, Jesus, what was God referring to? God was prophesying, God was foretelling, you know, because there will come a day that God Himself will give His Son, His only begotten Son. Mm -hmm. In Abraham sacrificing Isaac in obedience, the angel came and told Abraham, Stop! God has already provided a sacrifice for His own. And when Abraham looked up, there was a ram that stuck, was stuck in the bush. Amen. Okay, and because Abraham feared God and, and trusted God, Abraham was blessed. Jesus, you know, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he sweated blood, you know, but yet he chose to let the will of the Father come into his life because he loves you. He loves me. He loves all of us. You know, and, and, and I want to bring this up to another level. Okay? You know, many of us, you know, in the Bible, it says in 1 Peter verse 4 verse 8, Above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. You know, love, the love of God covers a multitude of sins, right? Okay? You know, I know a lot of Christians, I know many, a few Christians have used this verse to uncover people's sins, 
people's weaknesses to even humiliate people in the face of everything else, right? Okay? They misread the scripture. Okay? You know, if God has given us the gift of prophecy and discernment, you know, we need the gift of wisdom too. To know how to exercise in the in these gifts to help people. Right? Okay? Not to find fault. God has never uncovered our sins, right? He has forgiven us. You know, He has forgiven us and He has chose to forget it. You know, forget. He has chose to bury everything as far as the east is from the west. So far has He removed our transgressions from us. What gives right to a man or a woman to uncover the weaknesses of you and me? It doesn't. Okay? Men are not in a position to judge. Okay? Whether you see it, whether you see the weaknesses of someone or not, we are not in the position to put people down. The Bible says in, we are called to love. You know, and love covers a multitude of sins. You know, in the church, there's a lot of racism or racial biases going on in the church. Even in the church, not just in society itself, but also in the church. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, one, you, if you see a, a church of one race, it's only one race. If you see a church of just one group of people, it's only that group of people. You know, for me in Word of Life, my heart has always been this. And I know, and, and, and one pastor that I really, really respect in the past, he told me this. Don't let your church become a church just for Chinese people. You know, and I agree with him wholeheartedly. You know, Word of Life, you know, now the majority of us are, are Chinese. We have one or two in uh, uh, non-Chinese families. You know, and I love to see more and more non-Chinese families walk in and become a part of us. Why? Because Jesus died for all. God told, gave a dream to Peter. You know, gave a dream to Peter and told Peter, whatever God says is clean, you cannot say it's unclean. Right? You know, and God gave His only Son, not, for the, not just for one person, but for everyone. Okay? You know, and it is up to us to learn to love. To learn to forgive, to learn to accept. Okay? So, love covers a multitude of sins, or weaknesses, or issues, or things like that. You know, and it is tough. It is not easy to learn to love someone that is different from us. Okay? It's not easy, but it is a choice. Mm. You know, and I want to bring this up another level to the place of offense and forgiveness. Okay? You know, Jesus said in Matthew 6, okay? Right? If you do not forgive, neither will the Father forgive you. He says in Luke as well, you know, Peter asked, how many times must we forgive? Jesus said seven. And Peter said, is it seven times? Mm. Jesus replied, he said, seven times seventy. Mm. Seven times seventy in Hebrew means an infinite number. You know, to forgive infinitely, endlessly. Whenever somebody hurts you or offends you, you choose to forgive. Why? Because we are not God. Revenge does not belong to us. Vengeance does not belong to us. Mm. You know? And, the, and in, in Matthew 6, it says, If you do not forgive, neither will the Father forgive you. Why? Because in unforgiveness, in offenses, we have taken back, you know, from God, okay, that we don't want to play God. And we've taken back from God that we want to play God. We want to be we want to be executed, solicitor, we want to be to, to be judged as well. And we want to be the, the, the punish the punisher as well. You know, vengeance. You know, so we cannot play God because for a vengeance belongs to God. We need to surrender to God. Amen. God, I cannot hold offenses because I am not God. Vengeance does not belong to me because I am not God. I choose to forgive. And I release. Mm. You know, and one thing for, for me in, in pastoring, uh, you know, we face people, all offenses all the time. Okay? Sometimes out of people's callous remarks, out of people's callous actions, right? You know, and I learned something, you know, when somebody offends you, sometimes it's not because they want to pinpoint your faults, but because it's the issues that are going on in their own life. I can judge someone because. I have gone. I, I see the same similarities that I have gone through. 
And sometimes we try to, we try to, uh, what, what you call it? Extend, you know, extend our own problems to other people. And we try to convince other people that they are similar to us, you know, in everything. Okay? But the thing is, right, in learning to forgive, you know, it's a choice. Mm. To learn to love is a choice. To learn to forgive is also a choice. That's right. right? And in forgiving, you begin to feel the heart of God. You know, what is that heart? Don't we hurt God sometimes? Don't we disappoint God sometimes? But yet, His forgiveness for us is forever. Mm. You know, forgive us for once forever. You know? You know, so some, when, we, when we begin to forgive and you feel the hurt of forgiving someone, you're feeling the heartbeat of God. You're learning to love by choice. You're learning to have compassion again. You're learning to, to tell yourself, I need to care. I need to love. I need to do to love as God does. Mm -hmm. And in closing, I to, uh, 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 in Matthew 7, oh no, sorry, not Matthew, in Micah 7, verse 18 to 19, you know how God treats our offenses? How we have hurt Him in the past? How our sins, you know how God treats us? You know, it says in the Bible, He has tread our sins underfoot. Okay? Underfoot. He never tread, tread you underfoot. He tread our sins underfoot. Meaning what? How did God judge our sins? He judged us by judging His Son. That means He judged His own Son under His feet. You know? He put His own Son for one moment under His feet. For us. Okay? For us. Okay? And then He hurled, hurled our infirmity iniquities into the depths of the ocean. Mm -hmm. And that's how God wants us to deal with offenses. When somebody hurts you, when somebody offends you, what do you do? You take your sin, the, the offenses of that person and you dump it into the deepest parts of the oceans that you can never see it, you can never recover it, you can never remember it anymore. You can remember, but you can never uncover it. You know, because it's too deep to go to get it back up. God is telling us, as much as He's forgiven you, as much as He's forgotten everything that you've done right until today that has hurt Him, He wants you to do the same to someone else as well. Mm. Because it is not our place to hold offenses and to bear vengeance. It's not our place. We are not God. We do not know how to, how to uh, process you know, offenses. So God gives us a doorway out. And the doorway out is to forgive. Forgive and to forget it. No matter how much people have hurt you deeply, forget it. Okay? Forget it. And let me tell you, the deepest hurts and the deepest en uh, that the enemy attacks you, okay, always comes to people that really love you. Right? Okay? So, you know, God is treating us this way. As much as God uh, loves us, He cannot do, He cannot come to a place where He brings Himself to a place where He forgets us. He chose to forgive and forget our sins. Right? Okay, so in the same way, God wants us to do that whenever offenses come. To forgive and to forget by choice. Because we have the new nature in us. Amen? Okay, because the tree of life is in us. Okay, if the tree of life is not in you, you will never forgive. But because of the tree of life in you, you come to a place, Father, help me. Help me to forgive. Help me forget right amen so so sometimes okay you know there are things in our life from offenses to anything else we hold so precious like our isaacs are huh? it's time to let those isaacs go it's time to let our our you know like joker back jacob back okay let our moseses go as well let our isaacs go you know let our lives go you know we overcome the accuser by what? By the blood of the Lamb of God and by the word of our testimony that we do not love our lives unto death. Mm. Amen? Hallelujah. So this evening, you know, okay, I just want you to begin, you know, are there Isaacs, are there, are there, are there Moseses in our life? Babies, 
you know, our children that we hold so dear, that we cannot even accept failure or weaknesses in their lives. God accepts weaknesses in us. Why can't we accept, you know, when our children are, have, are going through moments that they are learning as well, mm -hmm. right? Okay, not every kid has to be a doctor. Not every kid has to be a lawyer or engineer. They can be an accountant. Okay, not every kid can be can be a million uh, need to be a millionaire or billionaire, right? Not every kid has to end up getting married, right? They can be whoever the God wants them to be, right? In the same way, you know, let's begin to trust God, as Moses' mother trusted God to to turn things around, you know. As, as, as Abraham trusted God to turn things around. You know, let's begin to trust God as well. That all things will work out for good. That those that love God and those that are called according to His purposes. So this evening, are there any Isaacs that you, are, you have to let go? Are there anything that you have been worrying for so long? It's time to let go. You know, it's time to trust God. Okay? You know, for me, I worry about finances. Is it enough? I'm in my 40, late, mid 40s, few years down the road, I'll be in my 50s. Will I have enough for, for that, in that, kind of, in that kind of life? You know, the Bible says, do not even worry about tomorrow. You know, okay? Because tomorrow will worry about itself. Mm. But it's hard. The Bible says it's easy, but it's hard. But this is where we learn to, in the, in the face of fear, God, I trust you. God, I surrender to you. God, I will choose to praise you. You know, God told me many years ago when I came into full time, okay, can I, can I get a job? I told him because my salary in church was so low, okay, was not enough to survive, not what I wanted. I was working in a bank before, okay, you know, okay, so when I came into full time, it was not enough, you know, so I asked God, can I work part time? Okay, can I work part time somewhere, you know, cashier in Tesco or Jasco or, you know, whatever shopping center, Kimisawa was this, Baksun. God said to me three times in a dream, in his word, you know, and I can't remember, or something else. Three times God said to me, no, no, no. You live by faith. If you cannot trust God, if you cannot trust me, you know, to to to, to, to supply for you, you cannot preach me. If I cannot trust God for my life, I have no business preaching about him or telling people about him. You know, so God told me three times, no, no, no. Sometimes I ask God, even in the midst of everything else, even, even of current, can I work? I hear the same word, same echoes, no. Trust God. You know, will I have enough when I retire? God's answer to me is, not yes or no, but trust God. Trust God. And, you know, if you are Chinese and you are very money-minded, Stop measuring God's performance by how much is in your bank. Don't do that. Okay? Don't measure God by the standards of mammon. Okay? Do you like to be measured against up against something? No. Okay? So don't measure God by the standards of the world. Amen? Okay? Let's begin to open our hearts. I think in this time of pandemic, God just wants us to trust Him. Trust Him. From 30 over days, become 42 days. 42 days now become 50 over days in Malaysia. Okay? Now, we don't know whether MCO is really going to end or not. Alright? Okay? Will it go on until the end of the year? Okay? Right? Okay? In America, I know in Delaware, the schools, some of the schools are in Delaware are off for the rest of the year. No point going back to school already because it's half a year gone. You only got three more months for school before going back to school, right? Mm. <laughs> Funny, huh? Mm. Okay? So, let's just begin to pray. You know, let's begin to pray. You know, are there any Isaacs in our life? Are there any Moseses? Are you, a, are you, are you like Jacobat? You know Jacobat, Moses' mom. Do you have to let go of, of things that are precious to you? Because you keep it on, it will die. It will have, it, it's risk of surviving is, is, is worse. But when you release it, there's a potential, you don't know whether you will survive, but, the, but there's a greater potential to survive. In the end, you really sit unto God, and God will turn it around for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's just pray. Let me, let us pray together. Father God, I just pray. Mm -hmm. Lord, that you search our hearts. Search mm -hmm. our hearts. 
Search our lives. Are there any things in our life that are holding your purpose, your grace, your mercy in, in our life? Are there anything, Lord, that we have placed in our pathway that have stopped you from pouring your, uh, your endless grace into our life? Is it an offense? Is it something we hold precious? Is it something we hold because we fear? Is it something, a comfort zone? Is it a, 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 a consolation item that we hold? Are we holding, Lord, our memories of the past because we're scared about tomorrow? Father God, are we as parents, oh God, worry about our children's future because, because we see that our own future, Lord, is such a struggle already. Are we worried about them? We, that we want them to do better, but it's coming up in anxiousness and anxiety more than anything else, oh God. Father God, we ask you, oh God, that you will search all of our lives, you will search all our hearts, and that may we, may, we, may we have your grace, oh God, to release forgiveness. May we have the grace, oh God, to release, oh God, our children into your hands. God, to release our careers into your hands, to release our tomorrows into your hands, oh God. Father God, Help us to trust you more. Give us greater faith, O oh God, in your Son, in the, in the Gospel, in the finished work of Christ on the cross. Mm. Give us faith, O oh God, in your Word, even more than anything else, O oh God. Mm. We thank you for new life. We thank you for the tree of life in us. Mm. Bless us, O oh God. Father, keep the blood of Christ over every one of us, O oh God. Mm. We just thank you, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Just ask Caroline to close us. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this time. Lord, indeed, that you would cause us to love others as you have shown uh, what is love all about, oh God. Lord, indeed, oh God, love, your love covers a multitude of sin, oh God. Lord, we thank you. And I pray, oh God, Lord, Lord even uh, throughout this week, oh God, Lord, that you will protect each and every one of us. Lord, that we will draw ourselves closer to you each and every day. So we just thank you. Uh, plead the blood of Jesus upon each and every one of us. Cover us with the precious blood of Jesus. Protect us, oh God. Lord, we just thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Okay. Join us back this Wednesday. It's already 9 o'clock. Join us back this Wednesday for uh, praise, pray, and preach. Okay. Maybe I will get my wife to preach. Okay. All right. Alright, so enjoy, have a good night, okay, and always remember that God loves you, okay, and if you are watching on YouTube, okay, uh, do remember to like, subscribe, and to strike or to smash the notification bell so that you, you will receive notification whenever there's a new upload of content, alright, God bless, God bless, and good night, Jesus loves you, go in His peace, Amen. Mm-hmm. <laughs>